Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and this is a question here from one of my end of topic worksheets from P2 about um, algebraic methods. Um, this is about the factor theorem and algebraic long division, and also some, something about cubic curves, and also a topic on um, differentiation, um, all mixed up into this question. This is from the Solomon J collection of the old C2 papers. And <clears throat> this corresponds to question number nine from that Solomon paper, Solomon J. And it's question eight from my worksheet. First question, part A, it says, show that x minus three is a factor of this function f of x, which they gave us. Um, x cubed minus four x squared minus three x plus 18. So th that's the first thing we have to do. Okay, let's just get the pen sorted out. Okay. So now, um, if you want to show that this is a factor of f of x, then basically you have to substitute what makes this bracket 0 into this function. And if the whole function becomes 0, then this is a factor. So what makes x minus 3 0? Well, x minus 3 becomes 0 when x equals 3. When x is equal to 3. So if I substitute 3 into the function, I'll have 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 18 that gives me 27 minus 4 times 9 which is 36 minus 9 and plus 18 so we have 27 minus 36 which is minus 9 and minus 9 plus 18 which is plus 9 so you have minus 9 plus 9 which is equal to 0 so we should we, we don't leave it at that we should make a statement we should say as f 3 is equal to 0 therefore x minus 3 is a factor of f of x okay you should you should make a statement like this to make it clear that you understand because that became 0 that is why x minus 3 is a factor don't just leave it at equal 0 and not make this statement so show that prove that you should make some qualifying statement at the end okay that's part a now part b says fully factorize f of x Okay, it says fully factorize f of x. So now we know that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 18. So to fully factorize it, there's a couple of methods you could use. Um, one of the methods, the most common method, would probably be using the factor theorem. Uh, sorry, using algebraic long division. We could continue using the factor theorem and try different factors. All right, so we got three. We could try, for example, x equals... 2, x equals um, minus 2, x equals 1, x equals 6 even. We could try different different uh, numbers, um, but you know because there's quite a few of them that could possibly give you 18 in the end, it's probably better to use algebraic long division or some other way. So I'm going to use algebraic long division. Now when you're using algebraic long division, you put the factor that you know, which is x minus 3, on the outside. And on the inside, you put the function. And if there's any terms missing, you have to write 0, okay, um, as, the, as that term's coefficient. Now here we've got x cubed, x squared, x, nothing's missing. So we're going to just write them as they are in order of size, in, in descending order. Okay, so you start with the biggest and end with the lowest order. So you start with x cubed, then minus 4x squared, then minus 3x, and then plus 18. And then we're going to divide. So we say, okay, x into x squared, x cubed goes x squared times. And then we multiply x squared by these two terms, so you get x cubed minus 3x squared. That's how you do algebraic long division. See so how many times does this term go into that term, and you write that over there. So x times x squared gives you x cubed. Then you multiply x squared with these two terms and write them underneath. And then we subtract. So x cubed minus x cubed is 0. Minus 4x squared plus 3x squared is minus x squared. And you bring down the next term, which is 3x. And then we do the same process again x into minus x squared goes minus x times minus x times x is minus x squared minus x times minus 3 is plus 3x and then we subtract again so this is going to give you 0 and this is going to give you minus 3x minus 3x which is minus 6x be careful with the signs here it's very important and then bring down the 18 and then we say x into minus 6 goes minus 6 times minus 6 times x is minus 6x and minus 6 times minus 3 is plus 18. It must be that we get a 0 at the end here because we know that x minus 3 is a factor. So when you divide x, you know, f of x by x minus 3, you end up with something with no remainder. So now we can say 
that f of x is now equal to x minus 3 times x squared minus x minus 6. So if we now factorize what we have here, um, we can factorize this further, this quadratic. We've got two, two factors. We've got two numbers that, go into, uh, that multiply to give you negative 6 and add to give you minus 1. Well, that's 2 times negative 3. So you have x minus 3 and x um, minus x plus 2. And so x minus 3 and x plus 2. And that will give you um, x squared minus x and minus 6. And that's how you factorize f of x completely. So f of x is now factorized completely. And that's part b completed. OK, that's part b completed. Now for part c. OK, now for part c. It says using your answer to part b, which is this. This was the answer to part b. Write down the coordinates of one of the turning points of the curve y equals f of x and give a reason for your answer. Well, we can rewrite this here as x minus 3 squared times x plus 2. And we see here we have a repeated factor. So we can say x minus 3 is a repeated factor. It's a factor that occurs twice. Okay, x minus 3 is a repeated factor. Therefore, x equals 3. Okay, the graph will turn on x equals on the point three zero. So the graph, the graph will have a turning point. When there's a repeated factor, you have a turning point. Okay, it doesn't cut through the x-axis there. On the x-axis, okay, when x equals 3. You can say on 3, 0. Okay, that will be a turning point. Okay, so when you have a repeated factor, I mean, this graph, if you, if you try to draw this graph, it's going to be something that looks like this. Okay, you're going to have x m minus 2, and 3 is going to be where the graph touches the x-axis. That's minus 2, and that's 3. So it's going to be um, somewhere over here. I'm not sure exactly, but somewhere closer to there. That is going to, it's going to definitely cut minus two at three. It's going to um, touch the curve, uh, touch the x-axis to go up. So that's going to be a turning point, right? So if you just write that the graph um, x minus three is a repeated factor, therefore it will have a turning point at x equals three. So. It says write down the coordinates, so the coordinates is 3, 0. You have to write down in coordinate form. That is the, those are the coordinates of one of the turning points for sure. Okay, we can deduce that from just the equation after it's been factorized, a repeated factor. That's part C. Okay, that's stuff we learned in P1. And now the next part, part D, um, we can kind of do this up till now, although we're going to formally go through this in... Um, the end of P2, okay, but this is something that is now also in the IGCSE syllabus, and we have really enough information and knowledge from what we did in P1 in differentiation in order for us to answer this question, all right, although formally it will be, it will be in P2 differentiation, which is towards the end of the P2 book, so up to this point uh, that we've got to in the course, we haven't gone through this, um, if, we're, if we're doing this while we're doing the end of topic worksheet for chapter one, Okay, this is going to come later, but we should know how to do it still from our previous knowledge in, in, in this uh, topic. So it says, using differentiation, find the x-coordinate of the other turning point of the curve y equals f of x. Now, we know that the turning point of a curve, the turning point of a curve is when the gradient is equal to zero. Okay, so these will be the turning points where the gradient is equal to zero. And we know that when we differentiate a curve, dy dx or f dash of x, when that's equal to zero, that's when there will be a turning point. That's when there's what's called a stationary point. So the turning point will definitely be when the gradient is zero, because at the point where it turns, the, the tangent will be horizontal. Okay, so the f dash of x equals zero at turning points. Okay, so if we take our function and we find f dash of x, it's going to give us, remember, multiply by the power, take one from the power. Multiply by the power, take one from the power and then minus 2x becomes minus 3. If we were to factor, if we were to equate this to 0, okay, that will give us um, the, the, if we solve that, will give us the values of the turning point. Now, we know already 
that one of the turning points is x equals 3. All right, so we know that one of the solutions to this is when you get x minus 3. That's one of the, one of the factors for this. So we can deduce what the other factor must be. I know that um, for me to get a 3x squared, this must be a 3x. 3x times x is 3x squared. And for me to get a negative here, that must be a positive here. Okay, and what number gives me uh, 3 when I multiply uh, by minus 3 when I multiply? It's going to be plus 1. 1 times minus 3 is minus 3. And we see we got 3x squared minus 9x plus x minus 3. So we know the other um, factor is 3x plus 1. So we can say that either 3x plus 1 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. So these are the two places where there's a turning point. x equals minus the third and x equals 3. Now, so now we have the two turning points and the one that we already know about is x equals 3. This is the turning point that we already found in the first question. Now the part D says find the x coordinate of the other turning point. So basically we finished here. We don't have to find the y coordinate of this of this point because it says find the x coordinate and so the answer is just x equals minus one third. This is the answer for part D. We don't have to substitute this back into the original equation to find the y coordinate because we already um, we're only told to find the x coordinate. In the first question, we were told to write down the coordinates of the turning point, so we had to write three zero. But in this case, we just write x equals minus one third, and we finish the question. So, um, so that completes this question. Other questions from this um, particular worksheet can be found in the playlist that should appear in the top of the page. Page here, sorry. Other questions from the Solomon J paper will appear in this playlist from over here. I'll put a playlist over here for the factor theorem or in chapter one of um, P2 algebraic methods. I'll, I'll put a playlist over here for the chap for the P2 differentiation topic, and somewhere you will be able to click a link to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.